a hunger artist by Franz Kafka, was first published in 1922. It explores themes such as death, art, isolation and self-denial. A man who is known as the hunger artist with fasting as his profession travels from town to town with his manager. In each new town, the hunger artist picks a public location and puts himself on display in a locked cage, where he fasts for periods of up to 40 days. In previous and better times, people from all over the surrounding area came to see his performances. Children especially were attracted to him, and when the hunger artist wasn't in a trance-like state in the back of his cage, he spoke with them and answered any question they had with a smile. The adults were also keen to follow the hunger artist's progress, but they generally did so out of suspicion that the hunger artist was cheating and secretly did eat. To the hunger artist's frustration, the townspeople assigned people, often butchers, to ensure that the hunger artist didn't eat during the dark nights. Even more annoying to the hunger artist, was that these men sometimes deliberately seemed to want to turn a blind eye as if to allow him to steal a bite of food. The hunger artist sung songs as to prove that he wasn't eating, but the people then started thinking he had simply mastered the art of eating and singing simultaneously. Although the hunger artist is famous, he is perpetually unhappy, because of the townspeople's disbelief, and slowly the hunger artist realizes that only he can be truly satisfied with his feats of self-denial. He also feels held back by the fasting limits imposed on him. Although the hunger artist finds fasting easy and can go on for much longer than 40 days, the manager always cuts the performance short at that time as the spectators tend to lose interest. Furthermore, the ritual in which the manager makes the hunger artist break his fast is humiliating and unpleasant. First, doctors are let into the cage to report the hunger artist's condition, which is announced to the crowd with a megaphone. Next, two ladies picked from the crowd help the hunger artist out of his cage. As always, the hunger artist protests, and the manager intervenes and makes a show of how frail the hunger artist has become. By the time this ritual passes, the hunger artist is being force-fed and the crowd is moved by the hunger artist's seemingly desperate condition. In truth, the hunger artist is only miserable because he knows he could have fasted much longer and that his supposed fans actually hate him. The hunger artist continues living in fame and quiet dissatisfaction, getting angry at the occasional person who theorizes that the cause of his sadness is probably the fasting itself. At this suggestion, the hunger artist starts rattling his cage, like a beast and can only be calmed by the manager, who often emphasizes the hunger artist's misery to the people by showing photographs of him withering away. Though these photos in reality show the hunger artist looking wretched because he's being forced from the cage against his own will, the manager claims that it's all the effect of the fasting itself. The manager's gesture never fails to intimidate the hunger artist, who then sinks in submission, back into his straw, forever misunderstood. Professional fasting eventually goes out of fashion as audiences develop a taste for newer, more exciting forms of entertainment. The hunger artist and manager end their partnership, but because the hunger artist is too old to take up a new profession, he attempts to continue his work, in the hope that the public might become interested again shortly. He joins a circus and becomes a sideshow, placed at the entrance of the collection of animals and other curiosities. As a result of his placement, the hunger artist is ignored by great crowds of people who came to see the livelier attractions inside. For them the hunger artist is non-existent, save for a few idle people who look at him as something altogether misplaced. No longer under the supervision and control of the manager, the hunger artist finally is able to break his fasting record, although there is no way of knowing how long he has fasted because the people at the circus forget to change the sign on which his daily total appears. The hunger artist eventually wastes away in his cage, unnoticed and unappreciated.
Many days pass before a circus overseer spots a seemingly unused cage. Upon closer inspection, the overseer discovers the hunger artist buried in the straw, close to his death. Thinking that the hunger artist must be insane, the overseer humors the hunger artist in his last words. The hunger artist asks for forgiveness, explaining that all he wanted was to be admired by everyone. When the overseer assures him that everyone admires him, the hunger artist tells the overseer that they shouldn't, confessing that he has fasted only because during his lifetime he never found any food that he liked. With these words, the hunger artist dies. The circus attendants bury him with his straw and repurpose the cage by putting in it a young panther, which seems like the complete opposite of the hunger artist in nearly every way. Marching around its cage, the panther brims with life, feeding hungrily and expresses freedom and vitality. In no time, it becomes a major attraction for the circus, and crowds of people stare at the animal in the cage in breathless excitement. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe.